Did you hear? Hoffman is back, baby! Hey gang, and welcome back to another video here on JoeCap. Okay gang, in this video, I wanna talk about the Hoffman elimination. That's right, Hoffman is back. Remember we ran into Hoffman the first time in Organic Chemistry 1, and we talked about E2. And I know it's been a minute, so remember that when we do E2 elimination, if you have a small base, you form that more substituted double bond, right? You form the double bond between carbons that are mo more attached to other carbons, right? So if you have, if you can make a tetra-substituted double bond, that's better than making a tri-substituted double bond, which is better than making a di, or, you know, mono, you get the idea. So if you had a big bulky base, like our classic friend, you know, potassium terfutoxide or even LDA, if that's something used in your course, then you know, remember that base, it's hard for that base to get in there and pick off that proton to make the more substituted double bond. So it takes the easiest one, the, you know, a hydrogen off of a carbon that is less substituted, making the Hoffman product, as opposed to the Tsetseff product, the less substituted double bond. Well, we are revisiting that concept here today in you know discussing the Hoffman elimination when you're talking about amines as your leaving group. So we'll just dive right into it. There's not so much mechanism here. I kind of want to justify and explain why you get uh, the less substituted double bond as your major product for these reactions versus the the you know the the less substituted double bond is your major product. The more substituted substituted double bond is your minor product. So. If you have a reaction like this, what you'll see is you'll start with an amine, or maybe someone gives you uh, an ammonium salt. Either way, that's what you generate in this first step, if you're given an amine. You know, we see we have an amine, and then here, for example, we see we have methyl iodide. So in this first step, we're going to just do exhausted alkylation of the amine, or just over-alkylation. So in, after this first step, what you'll see you have is... I'll even write in CH3 to be explicit, just because we draw lines. Okay, this is what you get after the first step. You get this nitrogen, and I almost want you to think of, you know, this uh, quaternary amine, and I want you to kind of think of this as a T-butyl group, because it basically is a T-butyl group, right? This is bulky and highly branched, right? It's very, very key that you make that uh, association in your head that it is bulky, it is cumbersome, but it is a good leaving group, right? Because it's positively charged. We know nitrogen's not a giant fan of that. So if we were to, you know, break this bond, give those electro electrons to nitrogen, that'd be maybe an amicable situa situation for everybody. Now, in this second step with, you know, uh, silver oxide, water, and heat, what I did show you is, after, you know, with all this alkylation going on, one of these iodides or whatever, uh, you know, you're making an ammonium salt, right? So you're gonna have whatever, you know, negative component that was your leaving group will buddy up with the nitrogen that has the positive charge. Well, and again, you don't need to know, care about this mechanistically. What the silver oxide and the heat aims to do is it aims to create a situation, you know, it takes the water and it tries, to, you know, it takes the water, it generates hydroxide and it, you're going to swap out whatever your um, counter ion in the ammonium salt is with hydroxide. So you generate a different ammonium salt. So, you know, from step, you know, this is step one, moving on through step two. And again, you don't have to know about this mechanistically. I've never seen any teacher ask, you know, to show the electron movement for this. You generate something like this. You just have the hydroxide and you know, negative on the oxygen is floating next to the nitrogen. Now, this is key because now we have a good base in the mix, a base that is good enough to do E2. So it's at this point that this hydroxide needs to make a choice. Do I eliminate, you know, if, if you have an asymmetric situation, do where do I eliminate? Do I make the more substituted double bond? Do I make the less substituted double bond? And this is what I want to explain and kind of justify. And it involves bringing back Newman projections. So really, this is a blast down memory lane for us. So if we were to take an example, you know, this example, let's first kind of look down this bond axis right here. So I'm going to draw my imaginary eye. I'm going to show you why you don't eliminate the most, uh, the hydrogen that leads to the most substituted double bond. So remember, your leaving group and the hydrogen you eliminate have to be anti to one another. That is a that is a requirement of E2, the anti peri planar requirement. And yeah, I know it's been a while, so don't worry. I'm gonna make sure to highlight that when I draw this. 
So for argument's sake, I'm gonna treat this as my front carbon. I'm gonna treat this as my back carbon. So I'm gonna put my leaving group, the big bulky amine, as the up group. CH3, CH3, CH3. And at this point, you can just assume that the hydroxide is kind of leaving the salt and doing its own thing as the base. I'm gonna leave it off here. So uh, let me, didn't exactly, there we go. Okay, so we have that up. And then remember, we kind of do thirds because we're trying to draw just the three bonds in a tetrahedral carbon. So it doesn't really matter where you go from here, but uh, you know, we have a hydrogen here. So I'm just gonna show a hydrogen. And then I'm just gonna show this methyl group right here. So if I asterisk this, you'll see that right here. Okay, now if, we're, if we are to eliminate this back hydrogen, right, we're gonna assume that this is what the Newman projection is showing. This hydrogen off of the dot carbon has to go right here. It has to, because this illustrates the anti periplanar requirement. This hydrogen, which is this hydrogen, has to be opposite anti to the leaving group. So now I have to fill in my other two groups and it doesn't really matter where they go because I'm going to show you what the problem is here. So you can see on this back carbon, we have you know, a hydrogen we haven't drawn and this ethyl group or whatever group you might have. So one, two, and a hydrogen. So it didn't matter if I put them on the left or the right. So you can assume the Newman projection is going to be in a staggered format um, because that will lead to the anti-confirmation. But no matter if you put, you know, you know, because this is the more substituted carbon, you can assume there will be more carbons off of it versus the other side of, you know, the, that we're not currently considering. Well, this is massively bulky. And because we're going to have more carbons off of what the carbon that we're considering, right, that has the hydrogen we're going to eliminate, you're going to see that that will lead to the big bulky leaving group clashing with, you know, whatever group is attached to the carbon that has the hydrogen we're eliminating. I know that's really wordy. But the point being is if you try to eliminate or if you do, you know, go through with the elimination on the back carbon, the Newman projection shows us that you're going to have a group, some group with carbons that will be having a gauche interaction with our big, highly branched, bulky amine leaving group, ammonium salt leaving group. Now, it's because of this steric interference, right, that leads to higher energies, which means that this structure is not going to adopt that conformation. That's why we avoid eliminating and getting this product right here. The structure basically says, oh man, there's some energy you know, increase associated with getting into the form that I need to get the ammonium salt and the hydrogen off of that more substituted carbon to eliminate. I'm just going to avoid that whole gauche interaction and the steric strain and, and all the other stuff associated with that. I'm just going to go for the easier hydrogen because you avoid you know, incurring this energy penalty, if that makes sense. So that's why, I'll erase this now. That's why when it comes to this point, the hydroxide just grabs the easier to reach hydrogen, knowing that the, you know, whatever steric interactions it may incur are less severe than if you were to go through with the more substituted carbon. And then, so hydroxide grabs the hydrogen on the less substituted carbon, Electrons swing down, you form your double bond, you boot electrons on to your nitrogen, forming you know, a tertiary amine as your leaving group. But more importantly, we know that we make the less substituted double bond. Okay, gang, what I want to do, right, now that I've kind of explained to you, so I would say this, be prepared to explain this. You know, maybe someone gives you a, you know, a concept question on a test. You know, you might have to draw a Newman projection, a little trip down memory lane. And it also makes you revisit the anti periplanar requirement but I suspect you're gonna find this on a complete the reaction section more often than not. So let me erase this and I have one question that I think will really illustrate, you know, how you complete the reaction and, and how you can go about these problems. And even in a separate video, I have one specific example where I show you how a ring ends up breaking with a Hoffman elimination, but I'm talking too much. I'll erase this, we'll do one example and call this video quits. Okay gang, to finish this worksheet out, we just have this one lovely example. I'm not gonna hold you much longer. Okay, so we see we have an amine and we see in this first step, we're going to exhaustively alkylate it or over alkylate this NH2 to an ammonium salt. So if you're keeping score and you wanna do this exactly and see what it, everything looks like after every step. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. So what we have here is, and I'm going to 
just to make, you know, for a reminder and, you know, to really drive the point home maybe too, too much, we generate this ammonium salt that's very bulky and highly branched, similar in size to a tea beetle group. Um, and, you know, at first we have whatever counter ion helping out and forming this ammonium salt. Now, remember, in that second step, we know the silver oxide, water, and heat will make it such that this gets swapped out with the base that ends up helping us produce our alkene product through E2 elimination. Now, you know, that doesn't really matter. You don't have to always do that. If you can see that this is a Hoffman elimination, here's, you know, I just wanted to do that just for the sake of reinforcing what we've already talked about. Here's what I like to do. I like to look at my landscape and I like to treat this as any other leaving group. I like to pretend, quote unquote, that it is a good leaving group because it does get transformed into one. I like to just look at this and say, what is my least, the less substituted, you know, the, 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 the what is the double bond that is, that leads to the least substitution, right? And then I like to play, you know, what double bond can I make? Well, I can make this double bond. I can make this double bond. And then this type of example, I liked, I included it because I always even overlook these. I can also make this double bond. So between, you know, let me even do this. Between the blue, the black, and the red, I think you can see, you know, we, we're all attached to this carbon, right? So we can't even like, let's not compare that. But it's this carbon as well as this secondary carbon, this secondary carbon, or this primary carbon. And I think what you're saying, you know, hopefully you're seeing is, the blue dotted line leads to the less substituted double bond. If So we would generate, as a major product, this product right here, because, you know, if we're going to compare, so this carbon is tertiary, so, or sorry, this carbon right here is attached to two carbons. This is not, so that is a di-substituted double bond. If we had this right here, this would be a one, two, three. This would be a tri-substituted double bond, right? And then also a different flavor of tri-substituted double bond if we had it over here, because it would be one, two, and three. So this is tri, this is tri. However, this is just di-substituted. That is our Hoffman product. That is the least substituted double bond in this example. And you are all now certified Hoffman elimination experts. Thank you for watching this video, gang. If you are clamoring for more Hoffman elimination, like I said, I have a standalone video. I actually made that video first, then I made this one because I wanted to explain the origins of why you make the less substituted double bond. But in that video, it actually uh, has a ring example where you do a Hoffman elimination and you know create a an alkene straight chain product. So I'll make sure to link that below. Check it out. Thank you for watching videos on Joe Kim. If you're here from YouTube, make sure to check out joechem.io. It's my website. All the same videos are there in the same format, in the same playlist uh, you know, break, breakdown, but there are also guided worksheets and solutions. You can go right from the video to a worksheet with the answers, practicing what you learn, and they're all 100% free. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.